Welcome back to part five of our series where we are talking about packaging, distributing, publishing, whatever we want to call it, our Python project slash packages. So in our previous video, we went through the PyPy um, website and we talked about how you need to register an account with both the testing version of PyPy and the regular version as well. And then we also talked about uh, some information that you will need to gather from that particular website in order to authenticate your process, I'm sorry, authenticate yourself when you go through the process of uh, uploading your project to PyPy. With that being said, we finally have enough information and we have covered pretty much everything we need in order to officially build our distribution and then upload that distribution to PyPy. So from here, we're gonna do a couple things. Uh, this is intended to show you the dependencies that you will need installed on your system in order to go through this process. And then also just covering some good, I guess, procedures to follow when you go through this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install a few different libraries. The first library that we will install is pip install setup tools. Now, I already have it, so it's gonna come back and say, you already have it, great. The other one that we need to install is called twines. We will talk about twines in a little bit more detail. Um, ugh, what did I, did I do the wrong one? Let me go back to my little GitHub repo. <coughs> oh, it's twine. Um, I will tell you, um, every time before you upload it, you should, you should, uh, upgrade it. I'm just going to tell you that you really should upgrade both of these libraries each time. Um, just because like I said, they're, they're constantly, um, pushing out changes and stuff like that. So, um, there, there are some commands, uh, that you want to do. Oh, and sorry, it's not setup tools. It's setup tools wheel. <clears throat> so it'd be looking like that. So you can see it's already uh, satisfied. I guess that's technically two packages, setups, wheel, setup tools, and then wheel. Um, and then if you want to upgrade both of those, then you would just do this command as well. Again, you want to make sure that you keep them up to date as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> apparently I was 34 and they're on 35. And then you want to do the same thing with Twine. So you want to make sure that's all up to date. Um, and then from here, we'll talk just a tiny bit about Twine. <clears throat> uh, so the intent of Twine is really, again, to help expedite and simplify the process of uploading content to PyPy. Uh, apparently, I guess this used to be a not so easy process. And so then they people were generous enough to create this library and now Python recommends it uh, when it comes to uh, uploading your packages. And so uh, really it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, I did provide a little summary about why you, you should use it. One of the big things is it's just secure. Um, and then also there's some documentation. This is pretty much all from the documentation. Um, and then talking about how to install it, upgrade it. And then once you've done this, you can actually build your distributions, right? So we're gonna create our distribution. So I do have a command here for us to use. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna do Python setup py. So we're gonna specify our setup.py file. We're gonna specify standard distribution and then build distribution wheel. So when we run this command, we'll let it go. And then we're gonna see what the output is. It's gonna generate a few different folders. And from here, what the hell's wrong with it? I thought it was fine. Where? <clears throat> No, that should be fine. 
Mm -hmm. Um, setup.py, find namespace packages, and convert. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's an include. Oh, why did I have that one? Okay, well, I'm sorry about that. I I guess I had something wrong. I thought it was where, but I guess not. In this case, it's going to be include. <laughs> so um, what happens when you run this command is a couple folders are going to be generated. The first one will be your egg info. Uh, this one basically just provides things like package info. So you'll see the markdown file and you'll notice here, this is a lot of the metadata information that was provided in our setup.py file, including our markdown content. But basically it's just a summarized version of all the metadata that we specified. Um, we also have some requirements in here as well. We then have our sources. And so this basically just lists out all the different files that need to be included in our particular uh, package. So this is just here to make sure that installation process is simple and easy. So very advantageous. Again, it's nice that it lays it out all for us. And then finally, <clears throat> um, there is the top level text. So basically, this is just how you would import it. So it would be import sigma. And that's really it for your egg info. This is just a lot of kind of the more metadata and just you know package information specific. It also built our distribution. So we have our wheel file. And this is basically just a bunch of binary content. And then you have your tar.gz file. Again, this is just information if you wanted to upload it and stuff like that, you could. Um, this will also be uploaded to um, PyPy. So when you upload it and then download it to install it, it's technically um, doing all of that. And then additionally, it does have our library as well. So you can see all the information here and then all the files that go inside of it. And that's under your library one. And then it has Win32, I guess. Um, I've never really seen this one populated, but it is there as well. Sometimes I'll refresh the folder because for some reason Visual Studio Code doesn't pop this up right away. But once you have that, you actually can go on to the next step, which is uh, uploading this particular package to PyPy. Now, remember, you want to do the testing one first before you do the regular one. I'm going to say that again. You want to do the testing one first before you do the regular one. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my little readme document and I'm going to look and see what I have. Now, from here, um, I need to specify where I'm going to upload it to. So I have some examples in here. So this one's saying, hey, I want to upload it. I'm going to use Twine to upload it to the repository test pi pi. And then I want everything in my distribution folder. I want everything in my distribution folder. And then if I don't have my Python package index runtime configuration file set up and in the proper location, I would be prompted for the username and the password for my test account. So in this example, I think I also have like another one on here too. Um, if you want to follow like kind of what I was basically doing. If you choose not uh, to put the runtime configuration file inside uh, the specified location, you can manually point to it, but then you need to specify the config file argument. So you need to specify, and then you would need to specify the location of that file. Okay, so you're gonna have to point to it. Again, you do have that option. I, would, I wouldn't recommend that. I really would just put it in the home location and then maybe have a copy somewhere in a private repository if you need it. Um, but or do like a password generator like I do. And then from there, it, it knows to use that. So that way, again, if you don't wanna be prompted. However, in this case, because we have that file in the right location, we don't need to specify this argument. This is only if you don't put it in that location. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. Mm -hmm. Where is it? There it is. And I'm going to go through it. So we'll take this, we'll copy it, and then we'll put it there. You can see it's going through the uploading process. Again, if you were to run into an issue for a naming convention, it's gonna happen right there. It's gonna say something about, hey, that name already exists, you can't upload it. If you run across a username or a password issue or an API token, it's gonna be an authentication issue. So those are the only two issues I've run into at this point. So it's either you can't use that name or you aren't authenticated or that version already exists. Other than that, you should be fine. From here, you can now go to the link and you'll be able to see it on the testing site. So if you look here, I didn't fill out the README, but you can see the README is here. You can also see all the specified inf information I put in my setup.py file. You can see all the specified criteria that I put in here. And then additionally, you can see information about my statistics related to the GitHub repo. You can also see that it will redirect you to that GitHub repo if I follow that link. From here, you can see things like a release history. You can see things about the different versions I have. And if you wanted to, you could also download each one of these files if you wanted to as well. As a user, I also do have the capability to uh, manage the project. If I want, I can go in here and I could actually manage it. And if I really, really, really wanted to, I could delete these things. It's not recommended, but you do have the capability. You can view it and then you can yank it. I think yanking means like it's there, but nobody will see it. And then also um, you can manage it as well. So it might do something like, you know, yank the release. So we'll mark this release and two files within it to be ignored when installing in the most common scenarios. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. So it gives you the ability to manage this and specify what versions you want to have there and which versions you don't want to have there. Um, <clears throat> and then you can also, uh, you can also uh, delete it. They do give you a nice big warning message saying, once you do that, guess what? You cannot re-upload it. So uh, again, just gonna say you can't re-upload it. Once you've deleted it, you're done. You're not, you're telling PyPy, you don't care about that version anymore. You don't want it there. So it's very important to understand that's not reversible. You can also do things like look at your collaborators and that kind of fun stuff. But for the most part, uh, there's just, you know, different information in here. I'm not gonna go to the collaborators, it's taking too long. There we go. Okay, and then from here, you actually can install it. So right now you'll notice something interesting, which is you can do a pip install, but you notice how they change the index to the test PyPy one. So this is how you would install it using the PyPy version. So again, this is your opportunity to test it. So if I want, I could go here and I'm gonna say, great, install it. <clears throat> great, so it looks like it installed. We didn't see any issues, perfect. And then you can even, if you wanted to, you could do pip show sigma.coding. <clears throat> You can see all the requirements. <clears throat> you can see the location. <clears throat> and then from here, where is it? You can see Sigma, Sigma. Now keep in mind, um, I do have, I think other ones here. Maybe I don't. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so there's some other ones that I've installed and stuff like that. So this is great if I want to see the content, I can see it real time, I can see that it is in uh, my, my site packages, everything looks good. If I go in here, I can see all the different wonderful stuff and then I can see all sorts of different stuff that might, might or might not be relevant. So very interesting stuff. And then additionally, um, that basically validates that our installation works fine. So great, it's now on our, our original one, right? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna upload the same distribution to the non-testing version of PyPy. So in this situation, I can also just, you know, take it from here if I wanted to. 
um, I can do twine upload distribution. In this situation, because I'm doing it to the regular one, I don't have to specify the repository by because by default, um, that one is the default one. So in this situation, it's a lot simpler. Again, note that it's not prompting me for anything related to authentication protocols or passwords or anything like that. It's because I specified that file. So looks like everything went fine. I'm gonna go and check to see if it's there. I don't need to reinstall it again because I was able to validate that the installation worked fine. But now you can see <clears throat> everything is here. And now I reserve this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I knew it was there anyway. Um, <clears throat> but you can see everything basically looked like exactly the same. So I'm very happy with this. I think it all works out very good. Um, ideally from here, you know, it's, it's a good starting point. We can also see our little description. So that's great too. But basically once you've done that, that's it. You know, that's, that's packaging and distributing it, right? So with that being said, if you have any final questions, by all means, ask away. But hopefully you found this series useful. Um, again, I'm not gonna say I necessarily shared every little aspect about it, and we've already seen that I made my, my one mistake. I question this, because I swear to God I had that as included originally, and then it freaked out, and then I put it to where, and now, well, no, it's, now it's fine. It's probably because I did control Z and I didn't realize it. <laughs> um, but hopefully, you know, this clarifies the process a little bit. Um, I know for me, when I first did it, I was confused as hell. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was confused. Um, I initially, I didn't realize I was supposed to be using setup tools and then I was using distribution utilities. And then I didn't realize like that wasn't the way to go. Um, and because of that experience, I really saw that. I think there's a, a need right now for just a straightforward start to finish. Like this is how you do it. Assuming you have your code ready to go this is how you would go about it. So ideally this clarified some, some stuff for individuals and I hope you guys found it useful. Um, and you know, if you want to contribute to it or if you think there's an opportunity to maybe clarify something, I'm all, you know, happy to hearing it. If you want to go and just make changes to the modification files, that's all cool too. Um, and then I think also just, you know, going forward, you know, if you want just an easy way to, you know, get access to all my code that I make public, you know, I don't, I don't mind putting it here. So you're probably going to start seeing that because again, I don't know necessarily which ones you want and which ones you don't want. But if you find yourself in a situation where it's like, look, I just want to download everything. I mean, you could just install the namespace and that's going to do it. So I'll try to get, you know, this in a consistent pattern where when I make changes, you'll see the changes in the namespace one. Um, and then something I'm going to probably look into is, do I necessarily have to do this in the sense of have separate folders? I'd like to see if there's a way if I could just point to it and it knows to pull those ones in, but we'll see what happens. I mean, I automated most of it. I mean, I already have things where I can move things from point to point. So it's not really that that's the issue. It's more of the, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> so again, if you have any final questions, please ask them. Uh, otherwise. I think that does it for this series, and then we'll see what the next series is all about.